Listen closely. I've got a very specific set of skills. Of which some will be applied to this movie, but definitely not all of them. And no, it's not interesting exactly, but I get to be grandpappy for, for, for a little bit. You know, it's kind of fun to watch. I get to be ne Liam Neeson grandpappy. Yeah. Grandpa, are you a good guy? I wanna be. I don't know, man. Today we have black light. <laughs> so, in what appears to be just pure tradition at this point with early year films, not all of them have been bad, but like, I gotta go see them all. And I was like, hey, I saw one trailer for this movie and it looked so utterly uninspiring. But I was like, hey, it's big enough. It's got Liam Neeson and it has a somewhat national release. I mean, let's go watch it. Who knows? I didn't look up a single review before going to go see this. Whew, oh, where to, where to start? Blacklight came out this year, 2022, starring the household name of Liam Neeson, of which there is no need to elaborate because he's another one of those big names where you don't really need to, like, you know, you know who he is even if you don't watch movies. Blacklight was directed by a Mark Williams. What else has this Mark Williams done, you may ask? Well, he has some producer credits, but what has he directed? Um, two other films. The first one, which I, I missed this in theaters. <laughs> what a shame, but uh, Honest Thief, another <laughs> Liam Neeson action thriller. You see where I'm going with this. And the one before this one, from a while back, uh, well, like a few years, a definite maybe, or a definitely maybe, uh, some political thriller with one or two big names attached to it. This guy likes to do like either, you know, the guy who's, uh, just when I thought I was out, they brought me back in, or I'm trying to get out of that life, or there's a political subplot going on here where the government is lying to us, like, Mark Williams, you got some shit to say, it's clear, I understand. <laughs> Oh, but this, this was this was really bad. <laughs> like, here's the crazy thing. This was worse than the 355, and that's saying a lot. I trash the 355, but here's the thing. Put the two films up against each other, I would re-watch the 355 before I stepped anywhere near this movie. Not because 355 is a better movie, oh no siree, but because at least with the 355, some scenes were so bad or ridiculous, or there were aspects of the film that just didn't work or were so cliche. You could laugh, you could make fun of it, you could riff on it. This movie was just, it just was, it just was going and it didn't go anywhere. Tell you what, you seen the trailer for this movie? Watch the trailer for this movie. All right, come back in a few seconds. All right, you saw it? Cool, you saw the movie. I should you not. Like even like the, the, pl the plot twist, the plot progression, who this guy is, what he does, by the end, like, it's all in the trailer. <laughs> like, you don't need to see anything else. I mean, Liam Neeson, look, I, I like Liam Neeson. Yeah, I, I would go as far as to say in certain in certain films, I, I love the man. I got no qualms with him. He's doing what he does best, which is just go in there and be the rough, tough, gruff guy who, uh, yeah, I know a thing or two and I'm trying to get out of the game now because, I mean, this poor guy, as an actor, he's getting old. Not to say that old people can't do shit. He has been the... <laughs> typecast trope for decades now G just give the man a final check and just let him like let him rest in his laurels maybe he likes doing this i'm sure they're still signing the checks away for him at least give him something inspired to work with this poor guy he's, he's just going through the motions but here's the thing liam neeson is so great he's the best part about this film even going through the motions i was like well he's not giving a bad performance he's just giving me liam neeson right now there's also emmy Rever Lantman and Ra Raver Emmy Ra Raver Lantman arguably she's the secondary protagonist she was good too a few a few scenes were kind of like weird with delivery they were the two standouts they were like meant to be the two I guess like main characters but they're the best parts about this everybody else just everything's just like average average mediocre like I'm getting ahead of myself we gotta do the pros and cons first the pros I like Liam Neeson, and I would pay to see him be a grandpa for two hours. That's a takeaway I have from this film. He has a granddaughter in this film, and seeing him be a grandfather and just run around in the, in the grass with a toddler and fly a kite around, and seeing him just have just very casual grandfatherly conversations, 
best part about the film. I am not being facetious when I would say I would love to see Liam Neeson be a grandfather on screen for two hours done. That's just it. I'm watching a play date, basically. Looks okay. <laughs> Everybody, our two leads do well enough. I have two pros for this film. That's it. The, the two leads do well enough. It was it was uh, it looked it looked 1080p like it, it was shot uh, in HD. But the film is so boring. And here's the fucking stupid thing. Like, all right, you see this black light, and you see the trailer. You're like, I don't know why it's called black light. I watched the film. There's one scene where a news reporter is talking about how to go after a story, and in giving the gal our secondary protagonist an example he says you gotta go over it the whole like like a crime scene with a black light like a uv light is what he says i believe never even says the word black light that is the only possible connection i can make as to why this film is named as such because we know what a black light is we know what a black light does and i guess the black light is supposed to be shedding the light on the government criminal conspiracy but come on like you could have the naming for it was bad the marketing made it seem like oh liam neeson's going there even the where the poster says like you're gonna need more men like liam's gonna go in there really he in my opinion he has like two action scenes that's it. There's a bit of action toward the beginning to establish his character, but all he does is blow up a couple propane tanks, grab a fucking Dodge Charger, and then rescue somebody and get out of there. Like, there's like a chase scene, there's like a shootout at the end, and then he like roughs up a couple guys, and that like, that's that's it. Like, it's, I, it, technically it's an action movie, but I'd be hard pressed to call it as such. Quicker would I call it a thriller, but I, I'm just being, that's even too generous of a, of a word for it. And when I tell you <laughs> the camera work and this, this, this camera effect, I don't know if I was able to include it in the opening skit or not. The camera work is comical in this film. It's the epitome. It was trying to be like early 2000s lens flare. That's all fine. Lens flares, I can do that. We all like J.J. Abrams, but like it would throughout the whole film. There'd be these like shots where it would like like choo 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 like with the video like choo choo, and now and someone gets on screen they're like and I believe and it's like choo 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 and it's just like it was so jarring and so distracting and they 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 employ this camera technique <laughs> technique in like the first minute of the film and as soon as I saw that happen I was like oh and I was like oh fuck like I I knew exactly what this film was going to be like a minute into it and that's so sad. This is a film that's going to end up being free on Roku TV in like six months like this is ugh. so many concepts like our main character's obsessive compulsive disorder and, and the government conspiracy and like reporting like all these concepts and these things where you could have gone any direction with them and like flesh them out, developed them as concepts, done something to include the narrative. No, no, you just like, oh, Liam has this weird thing about threes and you kind of see that. And then it's just like there and it's like a character quality. I don't know, it's it's the weirdest thing. I can't describe it, but if you've like seen a slow, bad, poorly done film before, you kind of get the idea. You know who this film was made for? The old couple that chose to sit next to me. Tell me why I go into a theater on like, I don't know, a Tuesday evening. There's like nobody in there. And this, this older couple, out of all the seats in the house, go over to my row, two seats over and sit down. I, not that that wasn't upsetting. I was like, okay, odd choice, but you know what? Okay, maybe you bought the tickets. Maybe you thought you had to like adhere to that code of like, oh, the auditorium's empty, but we got to sit in these seats. Like, sure, sure. But it was just kind of funny. Like the movie felt made for them because out of the cup, they were a couple, right? Guy and gal. And the older guy, like whenever there was like a moment, you know, where there was some like, I won't call it organic comedy. Whenever there was like written comedy where Liam says a grandfather thing or Liam says like, oh, you know, I, this is me trying to be progressive in my ideals, but I'm still tied back to, to my, uh, oh, I gotta watch out for the exits and all, oh, you know, oh, guns and my granddaughter. I can't teach my granddaughter guns. Like all these like really super shitty, cheesy lines. And every single one of these just, you know what, landed with the couple next to me. Cause I would hear the old man and he had the same chuckle every time he'd be like, <laughs> Like every time, no variation of it, just <laughs> like every, every single time. And I'm like, well, there's at least one person in this fucking auditorium who's enjoying this movie. This man loved this film. <laughs> like, 
It's just like your grandparents, like, oh, nothing too complicated. The Batman, why would I see the Batman? And like, I'm gonna go, Dune? Fucking, what's a Dune? Just, then they see this, and it's like, ooh, Blacklight, that sounds exotic. Liam Neeson, oh, I loved him in Taken. And then they go see this, and they're like, eh, hey, he's still got it. Like, yes, but actually, no. Oh, hooey, hooey. Here's the crazy part. Here, rating time. You know what, we're making this a quick rapid fire review. Rating time. Um, black light. I'm giving it, this is a shocker, I know. Oh, <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you, it's a lower score than the 355, if you believe it. I'm giving it a very, very, very low, low 2 out of 5. I give it a low 2 out of 5 because, I mean, again, if I'm being fair, <laughs> it's not absolute dog shit. You got Liam Neeson. Cool. He does a solid job being Liam Neeson. No, com no complaints. Yeah, the Emmy gal. She does a good job. I'm starting to see her in a few more things. Hopefully she gets a big break in something much better. You got what I can only assume is a very solid attempt at a action, thriller, political espionage. Like, there's effort there. And technically, technically, they execute exactly what they was set out to do. Black Light, you can skip this one. Do not go see this in theaters. Do not stream it. Don't waste your fucking time. There's so many better Liam Neeson films out there. Wait, what did Rotten Tomatoes say? It was like, what, eight? Like, last I checked, 8%. But then audiences love it. Again, all the grandparents out there are like, I happen to think this was a great, you know, I didn't see the twist coming, and I, I just thought it was a very compelling performance. I'm like, get bent. Like, what are you talking about? Come on. Like, I don't normally get so bold and brash with these opinions, but I mean, Jesus Christ. Christ, like, have the standards fallen? <laughs> if you want to see Blacklight so badly, go watch the fucking trailer and you've seen the movie. That's all there is to it. It's, it is a waste of Liam Neeson. I wish, I want to see a Neeson, I, I want to see a renaissance of Liam Neeson, you know? We're getting a renaissance, even though I never thought he went anywhere, of Willem Dafoe, but everybody's calling, oh, it's the Dafoe renaissance. He's been doing films for decades, like, he hasn't fucking gone anywhere. But you're getting these renaissances of all these actors, right? Or by renaissances, I mean, oh, people are re-recognizing their talent and that they're being cast again. It's like the Brendan Fraser and all that. Brendan Fraser has a legit, legit reason. He ha he went through some shit. But like, people that never stopped being talented, but just haven't been given the right material. Or due to circumstances, like, you know, Brendan Fraser, Macaulay Culkin hit rough waters. And that's that's understandable. That is a legit renaissance in, in their them as characters, actors, etc. But like, Liam Neeson never stopped being good. Like, he's still a solid actor, and he can still deliver a solid performance. I believe this, because even in a dog shit film like this, he's still, even at his most mediocre level, enjoyable. But give him something good to work with. Give him a solid script. Give him a coming-of-age film. Give him a, like, a nice action movie that reinvents what an action movie is. Give him something to get him back in the spotlight and be like, oh shit, like, he's still in good movies. But... In the meantime, you got movies like this that are just like painfully telegraphed. The action is boring. The action is boring. There's no ingenuity. Like he's he he's, he does some MacGyver shit here and there a little bit, but just by using basic logic like electricity make water go zap, and that's like oh he he was the he's the best at what he did. I'm like is he is he really? Because he can put a live wire in a puddle and flip a switch. Like is that really what makes him the cream of the crop? And then like whenever there's gunfights and all this, we're just gonna flash lights in your face and fucking trigger the poor seizure of the guy in the front row. And then like, just keep having that weird zoom and the, this film is a mess and it's boring. And I, if I ever see it again, it will be too soon. Again, you know what? Not as bad as the girl. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Maybe this is worse than The Crush. I don't even know anymore. These are all films in that category, like I said, of like straight to Roku streaming. Don't watch it. That's all I gotta say. I'm sorry that I ranted for so long. Don't watch Blacklight. It is a waste of time and it pains my heart. <laughs> look what they did. Look with how they massacred my boy. <laughs> like, hopefully we'll see better from him in the future. I believe he's still got it in him. So, thank you so much for watching my review slash rant and stay tuned for the next episode of whatever movie I review. Goodbye, travelers.